Hi, brothers and sisters. How are you doing? It's good to be here again. God bless you. My name is Joy, the joy of the Lord. Today, by God's grace, by the help of the Holy Spirit, we're going to be looking at one saved, always saved. Is one-sided doctrine. One saved, always saved. Is one-sided doctrine. Praise the Lord. This doctrine is a dangerous and poisonous doctrine that is leading so many believers to hell. So many people have, have been deceived and have been deceived. But thank God because God is opening some people's eyes. God is helping some people to come out of that deception and lies. And I pray by God's grace, as you watch, if you believe in that, God will help you open your eyes to the truth of the kingdom of God and the truth of the scripture. Praise the Lord. So today, we're going to look at this doctrine. Those people who believe in this doctrine, they know that salvation is free. And that is true. Salvation is free. But they are ignorant of the truth of the word of God that to follow Christ is costly. To be a disciple of Christ is costly. And Jesus did not put us in the dark. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself. Take up your cross daily and follow me. Jesus also said that anyone that wants to be my disciple has to hate himself. Hate his father, mother, his, his sister, brothers. And to hate himself, that's it. You have to uh, sell all you have. Like Jesus told the uh, rich man, sell all that you have. Give to the poor and follow me. It will cost you everything to be a disciple of Christ, to be like Christ. Christ wants us to be like him. That's the purpose of following Jesus, so that we'll be able to uh, be his light in this world and accept that we become like Christ, we can never, never be able to enter heaven because that's the purpose of our discipleship. That's the purpose that Christ will be formed in us. So they, have, they forget that our salvation is a covenant relationship between God and man. God as you know, is making a covenant with us. It's a covenant relationship between God and man. God has his own part to play, and we has we have our own part as human beings to play. So God has his own responsibility, and we also have our own responsibility. Jesus has died for us. We can't do that. He has paid for our sins with his blood. That we cannot do. But to follow Jesus. Jesus is not going to force us. We have our will. Praise the Lord. But the people that believe in this, they push everything onto God. God has to do everything to them. Yes, God has to pray for them. God will read their Bible for them. God will fast for them. God will think, make decisions. Do everything for them. God will work for them. So it's all God, God, God. God is... He will do it. His own missions. His own, he can do all things, so he will do all things for them. Come on. Wake up. God has not made us a robot. We have a own will. So God is not going to force us. Salvation is free. But to follow Jesus, you have to count the cost. And Jesus told his disciples, you have to count the cost if you are able to follow me. Many people went back. The Bible talks that Says, says that many of the disciples, they went back when Jesus was telling them the cost of becoming a, a disciple. Yes. So it's costly to follow Jesus because the Bible says, put off the flesh. God is not going to do that for you. He's not going to force you. Put on Jesus Christ. You That's your own responsibility. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, walk in the spirit so that you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. God is not going to work for you. He has done his own part. You have to do it. 
Flee youthful lust. You are the one who is going to flee. God is not going to push you or drag you. No. The Bible says, if, if you love me, you will obey me. You will be the one to obey. God is not going to obey you. God is the boss. You have to obey him. But we want God to obey us, to do everything for us, to pat our back when we sing. The Bible said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You are going to do that, not God. God is not going to force himself or force you to present your body. Make efforts. The Bible said, Jesus said, make efforts to enter into the kingdom through the narrow gate. Strive. You are going to do that. Jesus is not going to do that for you. Jesus is the way. You already died, paved the way. So you have to walk. Can you imagine a parent that's going to do everything for their child from baby to adulthood? When is that child an imbecile? Okay, if that child is an imbecile, they do everything for the child from baby to adulthood. But God is not calling us to be imbecile. He has given us all spiritual blessings, everything we need, grace. To be able to walk, do the work of faith. Praise the Lord. Or imagine a wife and a husband. The husband have to do everything for the wife. Wash her, wash her body, brush her mouth, wash her clothes, cook for her. Even carry her to bed to sleep. Close her eyes for her to... Come on. So it is not one-sided relationship. Our relationship with God is not one-sided we have our home part to pray. Let's go to Genesis 17 and see what God told Abraham. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 17, 1 and 2. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. Praise the Lord. Is that in your Bible? Walk before me and be blameless. So God is not going to do the work for him. And you know, God will help you if you call on him. If you ask him for grace, he will give you that grace. But you have to do the work yourself. Yes, he has given us everything we need. We only need to claim it and use it rightfully. Praise the Lord. Verse 2 says, I will make my covenant between me and you. Praise the Lord and will multiply you exceedingly. So the covenant is between God and us. And God has done his own. God is always faithful on his own part. But we, yes, we are the issue. We are the issue. That's why God was telling Abraham, walk before me and be blameless, be perfect. Because God has all the grace power for Abraham to be able to walk blameless. That's why he's telling him, walk blameless. If God doesn't have all the backups, all the power, all the grace to help him to walk blameless, God will not say, do it, do it. No, God won't say that. He doesn't start a, a, a thing that he won't be able to finish. So when God said we should be holy, we should be perfect, he has given us all the grace, all the power, all the heavenly resources that we need to do it. So we got to get up and do it. We, we don't expect God to do everything. Praise the Lord. Also, the believe in Jesus and go to sleep. Most people who believe in this doctrine, they believe in Jesus, then they just go to sleep. They don't make any effort. You know, they don't walk out. The Bible says, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. No, they don't want to do that. They are too scared. No, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't do that. Faith without work is dead. But they say, oh, we believe. We don't have to obey. We can do anything we like. We can praise God anyhow serve God anyhow, you see, that is not how it works. That is a deception, that's a lie, you have to be careful. They believe in Jesus only because of the blessings. Most of the people who are, you know, uh, advocating this kind of doctrine, they believe only for what they 
need from Jesus for blessings, for heaven, yeah. Many of them don't want to go to hell. They want to escape hell, but they don't want to do the work that will lead to the kingdom of God. Can you imagine? They just want to go to heaven, but they don't want to walk to heaven. They don't want to uh, do what it takes to, to enter heaven. And how, how can that be? It's not done. Praise the Lord. They say, oh, we have eternal life. The Bible says, when you believe, we have eternal life. Yes, you have eternal life. You have eternal life. Remember the word of God says, John 3, 3 says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you are seeing the kingdom of God. When you go further down, John 3, 5 says, except a man be born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. You cannot enter. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. So being born of the water and of the Holy Spirit entails that you work out your salvation with fear and trembling. What are the word of God? As you obey the word of God, as you study the word of God, as you pursue you know, our holiness in God, in Christ Jesus, as you deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow Jesus Christ. That's how you strive, praise the Lord. The Bible says strive to enter the narrow gate. Huh? Jesus said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow. But many of those people, they keep their cross somewhere. They don't know. Maybe once a week they pick the Bible or maybe when they are in trouble, that's when, yeah, they pick the Bible. But just have fun, you know, go to church, entertainment, they cherry pick the Bible, they don't want to grow up, they don't want to, oh, they don't want to do those, any, any work that will stretch their muscle. No, we believe in God, we are going to heaven, that's what I say. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will help them. I'm praying for them. God will open their eyes. I'm, I'm praying that God will give us grace to strive. The Bible says in Titus 2, 11 to 12, the grace of God has appeared unto all men unto salvation, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly laws that we may live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. But our brethren that believe in one save always save, does he want to use the grace to live soberly, righteously, godly. They want to continue in the lustful way. They love the, the, the things of this world. They love that the, their lustful uh, flesh to desire. They don't want to change. They don't want to change. And that is going to be a lot of hindrances to your faith. Yes. Because God cannot... Um, God is going to judge sin. God cannot, you know, uh, endure sinful ways and wicked ways. He's going to judge. And the Bible says, judgment will start from my home house. Praise the Lord. So we need to be careful. Hebrews 12, 14 said, Pursue peace with all men and holiness, without which no one shall see the Lord. Huh. When you talk about holiness to these people that believe in one sin, they're like, mm, nobody can be holy. <laughs> nobody... Seriously? God said, pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no one can see the Lord. And you want to go to heaven, you want to see God, and you don't want to pursue holiness? That's not done. We have to obey the word of God. Praise the Lord. See? Um, they also claim that, oh, the Bible says no one can take us out of his hand. If you, if, if you decide to snatch yourself out of God's hand, God is not going to force you. No, God is not going to force you. God has promised nothing is going to snatch you from his end. That's true. As long as you walk in his path, in his holiness, in his righteousness, you God's got you. The Bible says, he that breaks the edge, the serpents will bite. So if you continue to live in sin, the devil is roaring like a, like a lion seeking wood to devour. He's going to devour you. So you are walking out of his love yourself. You want to snatch yourself out of God's end through your sins, because of your sins and, and lustful ways. 
Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will help us to understand this truth. God is not going to force you to follow him or to enter heaven. No, it's your choice. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the lamb. God will help you when you call him. He has grace. He has given us all spiritual blessings for us to be able to live holy, for us to be able to live a righteous life. His grace is available. But what are you using his grace for? Are you continuing in sin? And then you said cheap grace is covering you? Hmm. You need to be careful, my brothers and sisters. And, you know, let's also look at um, some of their arguments. They say, oh, God is able to preserve us to the end. God is able to preserve you blameless. If you submit yourself, then he will mold you. He will, he will break you. He will, he will present you blameless. But if you are not ready to submit yourself to him, God is not going to force you. Come on. He's not going to drag you. Praise the Lord. We have to be willing and obedient. The Bible says, submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. If you don't submit to God, if you resist the devil, the devil is still just going to be looking at you and like, tell me, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? That's what the devil is going to ask you. And he's going to deal with you. Praise the Lord. I pray the Lord will help us. Let's see some of the examples in the Bible. We looked parable of the ten virgins. These are ten virgins, but only five made it. Oh, you said those are parable, really? Hmm. God is teaching us something. Even Jesus said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, many will come from the east and west, but you, the sons of the kingdom, you know where we found. Look at the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. Rich man called Abraham, father. In fact, when, when the Lord opened my heart to that scripture, Father Abraham called him, son. Can you go back and read Matthew, um, Luke 16, 9 to 31, the story of the rich man and, the, and, and Lazarus. Abraham called him, son. You will enjoy all your riches in your lifetime. Abraham called him son. So he was a son of Abraham and he ended up in hell. Come on. Jesus said that if your, if your eyes will cause you to sin and will take you to hell, pluck it out. It's better that your part is, is, is destroyed than for your whole body to go to hell. Come on. That's Jesus is telling you. If your hand is going to make you to go to hell, cut it off so that you'll be able to, to, to make it to heaven without hand. It's better for you to make it to heaven without hand than for your hand to take your whole body into hell. Let's wake up. Praise the Lord. Look at Demas. The Bible talks about Demas. He, he went back. Some of them make shipwreck of their faith because they were convertors. They loved the things of the world. Ananias and Sapphira, remember them? In hearts, they lied to the Holy Spirit and they dropped dead instantly. So many people, the Bible says, how can we escape if we neglect such a great salvation that we have? How can we escape the judgment of God? We need to wake up. Let, let's go to the scripture and read that scripture. Study to show yourself a problem to God. Let's not believe any lies of the devil. Praise the Lord. God wants us to continue in his word. He said, if you continue in my word, you shall be my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Let's seek the Lord. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Bye-bye.